Hey guys. This project has started a while back when Be Quiet sent most of their latest lineup of Southern Wings for fans. Rather than going out and just talking about general specs and showing you the fans, we decided to build out our long term fan testing suite with professional sound level meter as well as test bench that can support both 120 and 140 mil fans. And after months of getting all the right equipment, we're ready to embark on this new fan testing journey, starting with Be Quiet. In this review, we'll take a closer look at almost the entire range of Silent Wings fans and compare them to see which one is best suited for you. Whether you're looking for a silent cooling solution for your computer or just want to upgrade your existing fans, the Silent Wings 4 series appears to have it all there, or so it seems on the surface. Let's dive in and see what these fans actually have to offer. Starting with the range, it is split into standard Silent Wings fans and Pro version. Pro fans come in two options, 120 and 140 mil, and they are both PWM. The more standard version still comes in two of the same sizes, but now there is three different options. First is standard 3-pin DC fan, the other two options are 4-pin PWM and PWM high speed fans. The standard and PWM fans have identical specifications and both running up to 1600 RPM on 120 mil fans and up to 1100 RPM on 140 mil fans. The main difference is the control element. For those who are not familiar with this, let me guide you through it. 3-pin fans are generally less expensive and simpler to install than 4-pin fans, but they do not offer the same level of control over the fan speed. 4-pin fans are more expensive and require a motherboard or other controller that is capable of sending PWM signal to the fan, but they offer the ability to adjust the fan speed for improved performance or noise reduction. While you can control the speed on the 3-pin fans by reducing the amount of power sent to them, the amount of control is less. The high-speed fans, on the other hand, are, well, high-speed. The 120mm fan has up to 2500 RPM speed, and 140mm fan is rated for up to 1900 RPM. The Pro versions can go up to 3000 and 2400 RPM respectively, and in our test we found that they all are very close to these numbers, or within at least a few percent variance. I personally really like how these boxes are presented and the feel of the fans. The whole package has a very premium feeling, and it should be, since they are not exactly the cheapest ones on the market. Let me quickly cover what you get in the box, starting with the fan itself. The non-pro models come pre-installed with an anti-vibration mount and have an extra hard mounting option for radiators in the accessory box, together with some mounting screws. The pro fans go an extra step and come pre-installed with radiator corners which are optimized to use with radiators and they also have the other two mounts in the box as well. All of these fans are non-RGB, which I personally really like. They have a simple yet sophisticated beauty about them. They all feature braided cable at 50cm in length, but the one on the Pro model is more slim and has much nicer fan header connector. Internally, these fans feature 6-pole motors with 3 phases and fluid dynamic bearing. Be Quiet claims these will make them last for super long time, up to 300,000 hours, but that is about 34 years, which is a bold statement. They also provide 5 years warranty, 29 years less than the expected lifespan, but I will allow it. The one thing that is kind of funky on the Pro models that is the ability to change the fan speed profiles from medium to high and also ultra high speed, unlocking the full potential. To be fair, I'm not sure why you would need to change this, as in most cases you can control the speed using PWM, unless you want to install them in the locations where there is no PWM controller. You know what? Let me know in the comments below what other options or applications you may have for changing the fan profiles and reducing the maximum speed of these fans. Also, while you're down there, subscribe so you don't miss more content like this. Let's now get into the benchmarking. For this, we're using our new test bench with Intel i7-8700K CPU set to output a consistent amount of heat. For the cooler, we're using a dual tower cooler from Cooler Master and we have the ability to use either 120 or 140 mil fans on it. Even though this test bench is not representative on normal use, the purpose of this is to demonstrate the performance delta while keeping all the other variables the same. Please note that in the graphs that we're showing, the temperature is above ambient, which was between 22 and 23 degrees Celsius. Let's start with all of these fans set to 40 dBA target. Here we see almost all of the fans keep the CPU temperature down to a similar level. And that is actually a really good thing. That means the majority of them have a similar performance profile at a given noise level. You'll also notice a Rogue Cooler Master fan in this chart score, in line with the best of Be Quiet fans. If you look at the top of the charts, where we're getting a little hotter at 50 to 54 degrees, this is where we have those standard lower speed fans, and they don't really have enough airflow to cool to the same degree, but more on that a bit later on. 
When we change all of these fans to 100% speed, we get a slight shift in the leaderboard. And now the pro fans lead the pack by a few degrees, while the middle of the stack only drops one degree. The extra speed on those pro fans clearly provides a nice bit of extra performance, but there's a trade-off, which is obviously noise. The slow spinning fans are in the same spot, and that is for a good reason. They're actually running at 100% speed since the first test, as they are quieter than 40 dBA. Here, have a look at this noise chart for all of the fans. The pros are not only the best cooling, but also the loudest, peaking at over 50.5 dBA. What was surprising to me is the noise level of 140 mil variant. It is actually louder than 120 mil version. Normally, 140 mil fans are quieter, but even after retesting, we still got the same results. But just like with the performance graph, on its own, it doesn't show the whole story. When we look at both these graphs together, we start to see performance patterns. We sorted these by noise on the right side and then matched it with the temperature on the left. You can achieve similar performance to a pro 140 mil fan by using 120 or 140 mil high speed fan that operates at 60 dBA lower noise level. A quick reminder, 10 dBA is about double the perceived loudness, so there is a considerable difference. With that in mind, if we drop down to 35.1 dBA, which is almost half the noise of the high speed fans, then we're going to gain only extra 2 degrees of heat, which leads us well to the conclusion. The new Be Quiet range of fans provides something for everyone. If you prioritize silence and are willing to accept slightly higher temperatures, then you can choose the standard fans. If you want to trade some noise for improved performance, you can opt for high speed fans. While I should recommend the standard fans, I personally don't think there's any benefit to using them. You don't really gain anything at all here. You can achieve the same fan speeds with the high speed variant, just by turning their speed down and you'll still have some performance headroom should you ever need it. To make it even more reassuring, the price between the two is the same. Then there's only two types of fans to choose from, with two different sizes. If you have some spare money and need the absolute best that Be Quiet produces, then go with the Pro fans and you'll be happy. Otherwise, high speed is your choice. In terms of sizing, I recommend using 120mm fans for air towers and radiators for the added air pressure. Alternatively, I recommend 140mm fans as an intake and exhaust in your case, as long as your chassis can accommodate them. Having said that, if you want to learn more about these fans or want to see their current pricing, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.